this is a technique that I've been seeing all over the internet recently and I've been dying to try it out. Hi, I'm Tracy and I teach product photography. If you want to learn more about product photography, then come join my Facebook group where I share lots of free tips and advice. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this channel to get more videos like this one. Today, we're going to be using this mirror and a laptop to take some really beautiful pictures of this necklace. So, we're here in my home studio at the moment and today I'm actually just going to be taking photos right here at my desk. I'm going to be just using my phone and using the Lightroom app on my phone to take these photos because it gives me a little bit more flexibility over the camera settings. If you want to learn more about the Lightroom app, please just let me know in the comments below. The principle behind this technique is pretty simple. Quite simply, you put an image on your laptop screen that you want to use as your background. Then you place a mirror over the keyboard of your laptop and place your product on top of the mirror. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? So let's see how it goes. So for a background, I've found about 10 images on Canva using their stock photos that I think will work quite well as a background. The first five of these photos are blue sky with some clouds in them, a bit blurry. I've chosen these as this seems to be the trend for this technique at the moment. I've been seeing a lot of these blue sky type backgrounds, so I thought I'd try out a few different ones of them. Then I've got another five photos which are just kind of patterns or textures that I found again on Canva and I think they are going to work really well with my product, this necklace. And they're really going to help to tell a story of luxury, which is what I really want to evoke in this image. Okay, so I've now set up my laptop ready to take these photos and we've got a picture of the sky on my laptop screen as you can probably see there and it's being reflected really nicely on the mirror there so it's now just a matter of working out what angle i want to be at when i take the photo of this necklace and maybe just working out how to lay out the necklace as well Okay, so I've had a little bit of a play around um, and just trying to get a nice position with the camera, but I'm finding that the light is actually not looking too good on the product. So I think I might actually need to just bring in a little bit of extra light. So I'm going to grab a reflector and see if we can bounce some light back in there. So I've just grabbed a piece of card that is white on one side and black on the other. And I'm just going to use this to see if we can just bounce a little bit of light back in on the product there. So if I now come in, I can get in a little bit better, but I'm now a lot more restricted on the angle of which I shoot this at because I really need to be down here shooting. So maybe I need to do something like that. Maybe that will work. It's, it's really hard to get the right angle and work out where exactly the light needs to be. Now I don't think that is really quite bright enough. Let's try actually bringing a light in. Okay, so I've now just got a little LED light here, which I'm just going to use to actually add some light on to my product. So I'm just going to hold that with one hand here and my phone with the other hand. Now I've got to be careful with where exactly I hold it so that I don't get it directly in the picture, but it is still 
working to light up that product and we get that necklace looking exactly how we want it to look. with adding an extra, just an LED light in here. And this is actually working much, much better. We've actually got a nice light on the product now. Um, and I do have to hold my phone a little bit further away than I would like to get these photos but I'm going to crop the photos after I have taken them. The iPhone quality of the photos is perfect for doing that. So I'm pretty happy with that background. Let's try out some of the other ones. on the screen as I speak. So I've had a play with all of the different backgrounds. Overall, I found that this technique was pretty good um, and pretty simple to use, but I did need to add in a little bit of extra light just to make my product pop. Now that could just be related to the product that I am using. I haven't seen much jewelry done using this technique. But I have seen a lot of uh, beauty products and things like that that are a lot whiter, brighter products. So they might not need the extra light added in. So I think that is just up for you to have a play and see what you need to do for your product with this technique. I'm actually really happy with the photos that I've taken today. And I did actually find this technique really easy and a great way to get some different photos of a product that I've already photographed multiple times. If you are going to try this technique out yourself, please let me know how it goes in the comments. And I would love to see your photos as well. So if you're sharing them on Instagram, please use the hashtag Tracy Jones Photography so that I can see what photos you have been taking and how this technique has worked for you. If you do have any questions about this technique or anything else to do with product photography, please just drop a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you have found it useful. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more videos about product photography. Mm -hmm.